Um, so first example. Now, we did problems like this for an ellipse last class period, if you guys uh, recall. Hello. OK, it works. Um, if you guys recall, we did problems like this for an ellipse. And the process was, the first step was always to sketch the information. You notice, guys, I have two points. So let's plot that information and see what we can come up with. So by plotting the information, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, that's wrong. That's 0, 8. It's up and down, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, these are my two foci. Based on this information, there's a lot that I can draw, right? Because I know that the midpoint of the two foci is going to be the center, which has to be then at 0, 0. Um, then also, I know that the foci lie on the, do we have open seats up here if you guys need? We have the foci lie on the transverse axis. So therefore, the transverse axis has to be <laughs> vertical. And since the transverse <laughs> axis is vertical, that means my a squared is going to be under my y. Now again, remember the distance from, your ce from center to your foci is going to equal c, which is equal to 5, 8. I don't know where 5 came from. That's equal to 8. So if we know c is equal to 8, then we know c squared is equal to 64. Just from one piece of information, just by plotting this, I'm able to figure out all this information. Right? It's quite a bit. So I know that I have y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared is equal to 1. I'm not subtracting h and k because I know h and k are 0. Um, now I need to figure out what a squared and b squared is. So I only know c squared. So I go to the next one. The conjugate axis length. The conjugate axis is the distance from your covertice to your other covertice, or the distance between your covertices, right? And just like an ellipse, the distance from your center to your one covertex is going to be represented by b. So we can say 8 is equal to 2b, right? From the center to one covertex is b, so, this, so the distance from both of them is going to be 2b. So therefore, we could say b is equal to 4, and b squared is equal to 16. Now, to identify what is going to be a, I need to write back my equation. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I still don't know a squared, but I know that b squared is really kind of getting annoying. And then c squared is going to equal 64. So I subtract, subtract. a squared is going to equal 48. So now I know a squared, and I know b squared. And guys, all I got to do is now plug it in. y squared over 48 minus x squared over 16 equals 1. Wasn't that bad, was it? No? It was? Painful? Torture? Stung just a bit. Like a hornet or like a wasp?